Hi, Mihai. Uh, this is Kavya from Solstack. Looks like we might have uh, everyone that we wanted from Solstack. Uh, so do we want to get started? Yeah, hi. Hello. Um, yes, let's start. Um, uh, so I'm... What's the agenda for the have said on the three Yeah, apologies on the delay on program. our part to send you the agenda. Um, the internal meeting that we were going to have like last week, uh, last Friday, got postponed. And we are actually doing the discussion today to finalize that. Uh, we, we do have a rough idea, but then we want to get uh, internally to, to discuss that with our VP Mo and finalize that. Um, so we were just before we got on this call, Pedro and me, we were discussing about what should be the agenda for, for this discussion. Uh, the only couple of items I have is uh, basically uh, uh, just getting the logistics for the next week workshop that Pedro is going to fly out for. Um, and uh, pretty much that's about it, I think, for this call. Uh, do you have any um, other questions apart from the agenda for the workshop? Um, no, I think uh, I think we can wait for the workshop, and um, maybe there will be some ideas that uh, uh, we take off then, and then we would follow on those in the following weeks. But for now, because we were uh, pretty busy here with, um, uh, yeah, with our customers, there is no other real progress um, uh, in this area. Uh, well, something that I could mention is maybe um, uh, just recently uh, about this memory leak. It's not exactly the scope of the group, but I was working on uh, trying to reproduce the memory leakage in the salt master. And it seems I've managed to do that and I'm still uh, investigating it. Uh, so I've managed to uh, replicate that just with a master and two minions and running some uh, uh, while loop making some um, um, request through the API to run some job on those minions. Um, and I'm uh, generating a chart from that. And it looks like the event publisher sub process of the salt master is uh, going up in the memory usage. Uh, but I don't know if we want to discuss that now in this meeting or. Yeah, uh, uh, I think that would be a good one because uh, I see that in the meeting, Megan is here, Wayne is here. They've all worked uh, on some of these. Uh, I think Megan at one point was detecting that thing. Uh, was it sync call that was taking like a lot of time? And uh, I think Wayne was also looking into some of the memory leak issues. So they might be able to add uh, to the discussion. So yeah, let's go ahead with that. Oh yeah, so there's not much to say about it. I could show you maybe a chart that I generated is not the best one uh, you could get, but yeah, at least you can see that the memory leakage is pretty obvious. Let me try to... Uh, sure. Is it possible to send files here? Maybe not or... Or you can share it so that uh, when we upload the YouTube videos, it's more clear. Oh, to share the screen, you mean? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me try that. Um, okay, do you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so basically you, here is the, uh, uh, I'm running the some uh, while loop here. Uh, well, it doesn't look like ni that nice. We don't probably understand what's happening, but here I'm running the while loop and here I'm just watching the um, um, event pass with state event and uh, I'm getting some events here. And here I'm, I'm using this mprof tool to generate the um, uh, plots. Uh, uh, so, I, well, I'm, this is like a Python library that you install and then you get this um, uh, 
well, this uh, tool that you can run. And what I did was to use it to uh, run the salt master with, and then this is generating some uh, data file that then I can use and it generates a chart from that. And then let me send this to, Um, I'm trying to open the chart now. This was not prepared, so yeah, please have patience. Do you see it now? Yes. Yeah, so you can see that these are the uh, sub processes of the salt master and each one should get a, like a line. And you could see that most of them are just like in this area, but this one is just going up. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we can't, yeah, we can't see your cursor, so. Yeah, okay. I can see pretty clear garbage collection cycles in some of these other ones uh, where they, they generate a bunch of stuff and then looks like everything gets collected. But this uh, this one clearly is uh, <laughs> yeah is growing. And so which what did you say was the the sub process or whatever it's the it was? Event publisher, uh, I, uh, I've managed to identify that by doing the, just a PS uh, out from the PS output. I could um, see that this was eating like at some point 20 something percent of the memory and still growing. So even after stopping my while loop, uh, I've noticed that this is still growing. Um, and do we do we know have, uh, what particular objects that it's it's storing um, that it's got a lot of? I don't know if you've ever used. Uh, it's called uh, I think. Graph or object graph. Uh, I, could, I don't know exactly how to use it to get useful information <laughs> out of it. Um, yeah. Maybe if you have more experience with that, I would really uh, need some help. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. I've, I've done a little bit with it. Um, I, uh, D was on the team has also done some some stuff with with that. Um, you've got to do some a, a couple of little things to inject uh, that, that code. Um, but once you have it, then it can detect uh, all the objects that you've got in memory. I know what, one of the places we've seen a lot of, um, of growth in our objects is with our, log, our salt log records. Um, but so that, that might just be in the testing. Sorry, Wayne, I didn't understand that. What record? Uh, so it, when you're doing, a, when you admit a log record. Um, ah, log record, okay. Yeah, so we've got, we've got the salt log record and uh, at least within our test suite and the test framework, um, when that's running, there are times that we've seen just uh, the salt log records uh, increase by a, a tremendous amount, I think like tens of thousands of log records just hanging out, not being consumed and collect garbage collected. So um, we know there's there's some issue there. Um, one of the trickiest things that we out, that we've seen is with the output of that is um, 
like y'all say, have dictionary, for instance, but uh, that doesn't really tell us much because Salt uses dictionaries like everywhere. <laughs> so it's not really, uh, really easy to see where those dictionaries are being created and which ones are, you know, what types of dictionaries we've got kicking around because it's entirely possible they're innocuous and expected dictionaries. And then of course, it's also possible that they're dictionaries that we really should be getting rid of and uh, we just aren't. So, but, but uh, in this case, because you have a very clear um, process that's that's growing, I think if we can inject this the object graph into that code, um, that should be able to tell some interesting things. Okay. Um, maybe I'm not sure if we could do this, but maybe I will have to ask. I don't know if we are allowed or anything. Uh, I was thinking to have like a session where I could share the machine where I'm like a teammate session maybe or something like that. Uh, and maybe we can yeah. find a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that would that would be fine. And I've no, I thought someone called my name. <laughs> Probably not. Sorry. You know, right now, but uh, yeah, we can we can get a, a time to to do that. Yeah, I mean, if you have not, uh, I can or I can provide the instruction of how I I reproduced it, and then, uh, yeah, or maybe well, that would help you. Yeah, debug it or, yeah, I don't know what's best here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. We'll, we'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, maybe we can get in touch on uh, um, what's that chat thing that you're using? The Slack. Uh, okay, Slack. Yeah, yeah, if we did Slack, that would, that would work well. Yeah, okay. So I'll just uh, reach out to you on Slack after this meeting. We can uh, figure something out. Uh, probably I will not be able to stay too long after the meeting today, but um, yeah, maybe at least we arrange for some uh, convenient time. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm not sure if you're seeing anything, something happened on the screen that I was sharing and then I now I see just some black screen. I don't know what happened actually. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, it seems to have disappeared for me as well. Yeah, I didn't do anything. It's just turned black. Um, but anyway, I, that that's most uh, that I want. I, I, everything I have so far, so I don't know anything else. Uh, I just wanted to say, but I don't know. You, you don't see it now. Uh, um, it's really, uh, I know for sure that the process, it was this uh, event publisher because uh, I killed that exact process and then the, um, the memory usage went down. Even in the chart, you could see that there was a vertical line going up, yeah, <laughs> back to zero. Uh, nice. And I was hoping that maybe uh, something would, uh, is the parent would restart this process, but this didn't happen. So, because then uh, I could not use salt uh, for anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, maybe we could see how we, what else to do here. I thought that maybe a temporary hack would be to just kill this process and then something would restart it and con things would continue to work, but no, it didn't happen, so. Yeah, I know one of the things that, uh, at least with, with DWAS, Daniel uh, and I, some of the things that we've looked at kind of in that sphere is um, that there are some places where we're not really um, spawning off the, the sub processes in a, a, a healthy way, I think. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so like, like, you, like you've observed where it dies and then it never comes back, uh, or mm -hmm. if you kill it, <laughs> then it doesn't ever come back. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we've, we have some ideas and some thoughts about like, uh, kind of re-architecting things a little bit to, to make it um, 
one health here and then two, like in your case where if you kill it, uh, it should be really reasonably straightforward to, to bring it back up. Um, it yeah, just yeah. requires, uh, I think, some, some shifting of our architecture. So that's that's definitely something that we have we've come across and we've discussed a little bit, and I'm sure we'll discuss more in the near future as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds interesting. <laughs> Okay, so I don't have anything else regarding this subject. Um, I think we can continue after this meeting. Um, and then maybe we can talk about the workshop or uh, do you have any questions on your side? Uh, I had a quick question. Do we know if uh, Alberto uh, would be able to join the workshop. I haven't reached out to them, or reached out to him specifically, but. Um... Right, uh, he was not in the CC of those emails, right? Correct, yeah. I can try to reach out to him. Uh, does he work from the Germany office? I'm not sure. Actually, he's not in our uh, team, but. Okay. I think he, I think he is on the Nuremberg office, Mihai. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah? But then I can maybe try to find him and I can uh, talk to him. It's, there's no need to, uh, I mean, you can contact him, of course, if you want to make it more official, but I can, to speed it up, I can also go find him and ask him if he can join. Okay, I yeah. Can write you back. Okay, uh, I think that makes sense. Um, so, uh, Pedro, did you have any logistical questions about the next week? workshop and thanks for sending the hotel recommendations uh, I think Pedro will book his flights and hotel soon um, sure, uh, no yep. yeah for now no questions and thank you for the links uh, that that helped a lot okay no problem but do you know when you will be arriving or? so right now I'm still planning on arriving on Monday mm-hmm I don't know the the time yet. Uh, I will know more uh, either tomorrow or the next day, and then I can uh, reach out to you guys and, and send the details. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, because then maybe someone needs to pick you up from the reception. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I will contact you guys mm -hmm. to get that arranged. Thank yeah. you. No problem. Yeah, looks like that's it from our side to me. Hi. Okay. Um, so then um, about the schedule, we will, you will send us some details right later, right? Yep. The okay. agenda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Um, I don't have anything else. Well, if someone else wants to add something, feel free to speak. Um, it's probably of, of interest to this group, um, but I can just share a, a status update that I um, pretty much what I shared with our networking uh, working group as well. So one of the things I've been um, focused on is um, looking into this this memory leak issue. One of the things that we had observed um, starting a few weeks ago is that uh, our tests with Jenkins and Kitchen, uh, they were running into an SSH timeout. Um, and the when we jumped on the box and just ran top and watched the processes, uh, you know, our memory filled up, the swap filled up, and as soon as it hit 100% everything, then the box just became unresponsive. We didn't see any uh, um, we couldn't get any network traffic uh, into the box. So we added um, some monitoring with, uh, with Logstash, um, or I guess the, the new things they've got are the, the, there's a file beats and a metrics beat and a journal beat that pulls information off the box. And we've, we added those to our, um, our test instances in AWS and 
what we what we saw is that even outbound traffic was disappearing as well. So it was just the, um, that was failing. So we, I started looking into that a little bit and um, added some, um, some monitoring to dump the, the, the memory usage before we uh, called os.fork. The theory was that that's where we were, um, we were dying, but um, we, we never ended out um, using more than like 20 or 30 uh, megabytes, I think, of, of memory um, pre falling fork. So that doesn't, didn't, did not appear to be the, the case. Um, but we're, we're still seeing the, uh, the network just disappear. So I've started trying to work from the network side um, to just monitor that and see what's going on. And uh, I was actually seeing the, a certain one of our images fail reliably, but then when I started looking into the network, um, I stopped seeing the failure. <laughs> so okay. that's kind of where I'm where I'm at right now is looking into these network the network issue to see if I can identify is there something with IP tables or is there something else on, that we do within the tests on the box that ends out just breaking our network connectivity. Um, but right now there's still I, <laughs> I, I've uh, I've answered no to a lot of questions, but I still don't. Uh, I still haven't nailed down exactly what the issue is yet, mm -hmm. and we still get intermittent network timeouts. Okay. But the one thing we do know is it is definitely both inbound and outbound traffic that that dies when uh, when we see that problem happening. So that tells us a little bit, but unfortunately. Not enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not easy to debug such things. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially uh, when you need network access to access the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's it for me as far as uh, testing goes. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Um, if there's nothing else, um, I also don't have anything else, so we could uh, end the meeting. Okay, sounds good. Okay, I'm looking forward to meet you, Pedro, next week. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, and um, yeah, have a nice day then. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.